Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. My name is Matthew Watrich and this episode is going to be really cool. I have my big spring harvest planned today and so I have all these carrots and all sorts of other things that we're going to be planting today. Check it out. They look super cool. And we're going to be harvesting these heirloom carrots, radishes, planting tomatoes, jalapenos and all sorts of other things here in my backyard garden and orchard. So let's get started. This garden tour is going to be a lot of fun. I'm out here next to one of my Texas Prince peach trees and you can see it's got a lot of new growth. It's really covered in fruit and so the format for these garden tours that I've been doing for a while now is that I just walk around my backyard and I talk about everything that I'm growing in my peach orchard like these lovely peaches we have here that are coming along and uh, I do a lot of esoteric stuff as well in my backyard garden. For example, here is a pineapple plant that is two years old that my wife and I brought back from Hawaii on one of our trips and it is probably going to fruit this year and so it is my joy and honor to be able to present this really cool hobby to you guys in the format that I do. This is one of my raised bed and as I just showed from the, some of the carrots that I'm growing in here I'm growing all sorts of things this spring. I've got cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, jalapenos, strawberries, uh, radishes, a new blueberry plant and all sorts of really interesting things in this backyard garden. I'm growing sunflowers and all sorts of fun things and so I figured in getting started with this backyard garden tour before we jump right in I've prepared an intro video for anybody who's new to the channel so you can see some of the cool highlights from garden seasons past. The spacious firmament on high with all the blue ethereal sky and spangled hands a shining frame their great original proclaim the unwearied sun from day to day does his creator's power display and publishes to every land the work of an almighty Christ is risen indeed. Once again, April the 9th, Easter Sunday today, and I thought that that intro music by Acapella Hymns would be very fitting for the occasion. Hopefully we can get to use that theme music in some other videos, but just generally, we're gonna get started with the backyard garden tour today. And I have a bunch of different formats for the way that I go about these tours. Please excuse uh, any cars or music you hear in the background. We are in the suburbs <laughs> at the end of the day, and so, um, I'll be walking around for 30 minutes and we'll be taking a look at all the different things that I'm growing here now. I normally talk about my raised bed first, but I thought it'd be a good idea, just because I haven't done a video on these fruit trees in a while, to get started with our peach trees. And I thought it'd be best to break down this video by the different type of uh, you know, fruit or vegetable that we're taking a look at. So first we're going to talk about these fruit trees that I'm growing in my backyard orchard, and I thought it best to start by talking about my Rio Grande peach tree right here. So what's really cool about this is you're going to get to see the peach trees in almost every stage they have um, in terms of developing fruit because this is my late bloomer. This is my Rio Grande peach tree. And this little peach tree was planted here about a year and a half ago and it is very confused because it has had some freezing rain. It has had um, just a lot of hot and cold. If you're from Central Texas, you'll know the weird cold fronts and super late winter we've had this season. And so you can see some of these leaves are just peeking up under the dormant branches of our little tiny tree here. And these flowers that are blooming will eventually become our peaches. So if you're unfamiliar with the anatomy of how a peach tree works, they put out these little flowers and then bumblebees will come and pollinate them. And the flower will eventually turn into a little peach. And so I have some trees that are a little more mature. They obviously already have a lot of fruit on them and I've been showing them off. I don't think any of these trees will really demonstrate the way that the fruit grows from those flowers because uh, it looks like they've pretty much all dropped their, their uh, fruit, but actually this one does it best. And so my GoPro doesn't do a great super close up, but this dead material here is the flower that was pollinated and this dead piece of fruit here um, may have died for a number of reasons. One of the interesting things about these trees is that you'll see these clusters of fruit. And like, for example, there's four, uh, four peaches right there. I'm looking for a few that are closer together. This is the better example. These three pieces of fruit that are right here, like this guy's not gonna make it. 
Usually when they first form, you'll see a cluster of four or five, and by the time it's time to harvest, there'll only be one peach, because these peaches uh, will probably wind up getting about as big as my fist there. And so eventually, once they're mature, uh, probably in late May or early June, it wouldn't surprise me if my tree is, you know, leaning over. These trees have a lot of give, and uh, when they were covered with ice during the freezing rain, um, none of them snapped. We did actually lose two of them. I used to have eight, and now we're down to uh, six. But the six that are alive are really healthy. Just a few days ago on Friday, I filmed a video about my French drain, which I installed to protect my peach trees from the floods that we get in my backyard. So here in Central Texas, we have a lot of dense clay soil. Uh, it's one of the reasons I built this raised bed in the first place. But because of all the dense clay soil, my water, uh, or excuse me, my backyard used to be underwater all the time. And the frequent flooding wound up rotting the roots of one of my peach trees. And so I built this French drain, which is right here, right behind my peach trees along the western side of my backyard to drain water. If you want to go see my French drain video, you can look it up on my channel and you can see how well some of my fruit trees are doing from having installed it. We get an angle where we don't have so much sun and light in the background there. You can see these, these pieces of fruit are getting pretty big. Like I said, they'll usually get to be about the size of my fist. Here's four of them bunched up. Hopefully by May, they are mature. And this tree that we're looking at here is a Tex Prince peach tree. I think I may have neglected to mention the four trees that are on the other side of the yard. The first one I did say was a Rio Grande. The other three are Royal Zest II peach trees. And so they bloomed very early. If you're looking for an early bloomer, Royal Zest or Tex Prince is the way to go. The peach trees are super cool. As I mentioned, I also have these pineapple plants. And my pineapple plants, um, I just potted in these whiskey barrels recently. There were some olive trees in this whiskey barrels, but they died uh, just in the freezing rain this last winter. My olives, or excuse me, I'm sorry, my pineapples were in my garage where I keep them under a grow lamp so that they can live through the terrible inclement we winter weather we get here in Central Texas. And so I don't know if this pineapple has a name for the breed. We got it from Maui Gold. That's honestly the name, <laughs> Maui Gold Pineapple, um, from uh, Maui Gold Pineapple Farms in Hawaii two years ago. And so pineapple plants, I've read online that it sometimes takes them 18 months to fruit. I've got three in total. Uh, the other two are in these Home Depot five gallon buckets that I originally planted them in. And one is really small because it was hanging out in the shade for a long time. But these ones that I've put in whiskey barrels, I'm hoping they fruit this year. And I've read online that you can use rotting fruit to force these pineapples to fruit. And the rotting fruit is essentially, uh, it releases some sort of gas called like polyethylene or something. Uh, I don't cite me on that. <laughs> but it releases some sort of gas which helps the pineapples fruit. And so I'm hoping that in the years to come we do see that. Uh, that fruit. I think that that would be really cool to do a video on. Additionally, I have this sunflower corner over here, and you also on the intro, I've done previously a couple of different videos on sunflowers, and I've had uh, mixed results in success. And so this plant over here is actually grown from the same sunflower seeds from my uh, mammoth gold sunflower that I did a video on two years ago. And so I'm very excited to see it get big, um, but I'm not exactly sure what the result will be because you can just tell from the trunks of these sunflower plants that these sunflowers, this one looks like a mammoth gold without impurity, but my mammoth gold, I think was pollinated by, um, a different species of sunflower. And so we have some kind of mutt sunflowers in here, but I don't care. I love sunflowers. I think they're beautiful and I'm excited to see what we get. You know, the fire ants have already figured out that there's this all these uh, sunflowers here and they've moved in, which it's funny, you know, I've, I've always hated fire ants. I, I don't know a lot of people who love them, but I've actually grown to uh, appreciate them a little bit. Moving on, talking to our, talking about our next plant here, um, because of some of the things that I'm growing in my raised bed. And so one of those things is radishes. And uh, I've really struggled in the past with growing radishes and cabbage and other brassicas in the winter because I get a bunch of spider mites. Um, but this year, my my radishes did super well because um, I had 
uh, an ant nest, which is since gone, but it was over here in this corner, and they just ate up all the aphids that would otherwise, um, aphids and spider mites that would otherwise be attacking. But I realized this is kind of out of order. I shouldn't jump into the radishes right away because I want to take a look and talk about the carrots and the cabbage first. So let's over head over here and we're gonna do a harvest of all these carrots and my cabbage they're over here in this corner. There's a lot of really neat stuff in here. And so I'm gonna start with the cabbage actually. This cabbage, um, I read online that this is in, well, uh, I forget the type of heirloom cabbage that this is. It's, um, you know, heirloom cabbage. It's very cool. And it's got one little head here. And I've read that when you break off these heads, if you leave all of the leaves here, they will actually grow another head. And so we're gonna harvest this cabbage head today. And I don't know if I can just twist it off or I'm definitely gonna have to cut that off. That is on there. That is firmly on there. So I'm gonna go get some tools for harvesting our carrots and cabbage and then let's take a crack at it. So this is definitely a two handed activity. What we're gonna wanna do is leave as many of these accessory leaves on as possible while just getting our cabbage. So I'm gonna try again with two hands to twist it off. That is not happening. I didn't think it would. There's not a lot of give there. So I'm gonna try to get up under it with our shears here. See if I can give it a, give it a cut. Man, that is hard to get. You have to be careful with these. Otherwise you're gonna hit the whole plant. I feel like I'm, I can't even see what I'm cutting through. Almost got it. Okay, didn't get it perfect, but boom. <laughs> so we've got our accessory leaves here and we've got our cabbage, pretty cool. We're gonna put it in our bowl with our carrots. And I have to watch myself out here because I'm getting eaten alive by fire ants, but this is our carrot zone. This is probably the most exciting part for me. Um, all these carrots were grown from a seed using a seed vault kit, which my wife gave me a couple of years ago. Uh, we got on Amazon, I think it's like a, might be back to basics seed vault kit. I hope I'm not making that up, but these are all wonderful heirloom carrots, which are grown from seed and they've been super easy to grow. And so uh, the seeds, if you want to go see the video where I planted these seeds, it's in my November garden tour where um, I just went through and kind of discussed the layout for how I was planting my winter garden. Of course, you can see these have yielded uh, definitely as expected. I would say better than expected, if I'm being honest. Uh, this is our third or fourth carrot harvest. And so we've had carrots all winter uh, into early spring, just two seed packs have yielded. Uh, I don't know about the weight because today is the big carrot harvest, but so far I'd probably say maybe five pounds. And today I'm expecting probably 10, uh, just as this is the bigger harvest, but there's not much to know about growing carrots. I would say the following, if you're from central Texas or from a, a, a region with a similar climate that is hot summers and cool, not ice cold, not blizzard winters. Um, and of course we do get blizzards in central Texas from time to time, but this winter was pretty moderate. We got a couple of hard freezes and carrots do great in this type of environment. Uh, of course they don't do well, even little baby carrots like this one, uh, don't do well in dense clay soil, which my backyard is full of. And we even have some grass here trying to invade our raised bed. So we're gonna do our best in addition to this harvest to clean up uh, the raised bed, I think in place of this carrot, in the, in, excuse me, in place of these carrots here, I'm planning on planting cucumbers, jalapenos, and tomatoes, which in seasons past have been fan favorites for our summer garden, uh, both at home and online. Uh, we really love uh, tomatoes, jalapenos, and cucumbers. They're just great. Great for grilling and chilling, great for uh, burgers. Not, not that tomatoes are good for grilling. They go with things that, that, are, uh, that are good when they're grilled. And so they're gonna get to enjoy the space that our carrots were in. And I don't know if I said this clear enough, but the reason we planted these carrots in the raised bed, um, there's a couple of different reasons for that. Uh, we planted these carrots in the raised bed because one, um, we have very dense clay soil here in Central Texas and there's no way they could grow in the type of soil I have in my backyard. I mean stuff, soil that's so dense you can make a pot out of it. You can make pottery out of it, I mean. And um, 
this soil here uh, mostly came from Home Depot. Uh, most of it just came in a bag. It's cheap, um, cheap raised bed soil. I think it might be Kellogg raised bed soil, but I've amended it with perlite, um, fertilized, used 13, 13, 13, and also I aerate in the winter just to improve the quality of the soil that's in this bed. And it definitely has yielded its fruits in its seasons. This is, as I mentioned, not our first harvest. You've seen some of those previous harvests on uh, in my intro video, actually. But it's kind of funny. Carrots come in all shapes and all sizes. We have a small, a mini, and a micro carrot right here. This one obviously should have stayed in the ground longer, but um, I'm just pulling left and right here. I'm not gonna stick it back, actually, because I really do want the space for other things. And if you aren't ready to go today, I mean, I guess I could leave some of these with the uh, with the romaine lettuce in the back. But we wanna make sure we clear out as much space as possible because I can just even grab these by a fistful. Look at that. Wow, isn't that cool? I have always been so curious about where food comes from and gardening has been the coolest hobby. If you're even thinking about getting into it, I highly recommend it. Everything that you're seeing here today in this raised bed um, has cost me under $2,000. So the raised bed itself was a thousand, but you could build it for 500 if you source your soil a little bit better than I did. And then the sum of all these fruits and vegetables, like including starters, including ornamentals, couldn't have broken three or 400 bucks. Uh, but of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that gardening is uh, something to do to save money. Um, because yes, this pack of carrot seed probably cost 30 cents, but the raised bed I put it in costs hundreds of dollars. So like, have I saved money by growing all of this? Like, did this save me money? No, I paid thousands of dollars for the setting that all these carrots were grown in, but um, I'm not trying to save money. I'm trying to have a good time out here. I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to teach, and I'm trying to have fun. And that was definitely accomplished by planting these carrots. So we're gonna get those cleaned up, but it's not our only thing that we're harvesting today. We're also harvesting our radishes. So I'm gonna go back over to our radishes and we're gonna take another look at those radishes. And as I mentioned before, this is my radish corner. So similar to the carrots, I think I planted these radishes on the same day that I planted these carrots. And this is not our first harvest of this radish area. It's probably our fourth or fifth at this point. There are all sorts of cool things that you can do with radishes and carrots. Um, Charity has brought a lot of these radishes inside and cleaned them up. And sometimes we bake them, sometimes we put them in salads, sometimes we, um, what else do we do with them? We can glaze them in honey and bake them and um, all sorts of neat things, ways to prepare these vegetables. And so once again, doing a harvest today and we have all sorts of great looking radishes. These two in front here that have the, the flowers coming out of them with these, these sprouts, um, they look kind of like sweet potato slips, these sprouts that are coming off. These are in fact, likewise radishes. They are down here in the base and they're looking kind of dry and crispy, but I'm gonna let these guys go to seed here. That's exactly what's happening. They've gone to seed and that's why they have these shoots with flowers on the end. And we're gonna collect those seeds for radishes in the season to come. But for the time being, we wanna get these radishes out of here. And we've got all sorts of radishes. I don't know if there's a specific species that these radishes belong to. Um, and the truth is I planted these radishes too close together. You can really see that here. We're like, here's a good radish. Here, here are a bunch of radishes that were choked out by each other because of how close together they were planted. So I'm gonna go through here and take all the radishes out of our beds because uh, betwixt our berries here, we've got strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries. This is kind of like a fruit zone. And so I figured um, tomatoes are an honorary fruit and this would be a great spot for them. <laughs> but before they go here, we're gonna have to clean out all of the radishes. So I've really enjoyed the growing these radishes. Not all of them have turned out perfectly. Like these guys aren't small enough to eat, but um, they definitely would have benefited from being thinned out. And uh, yeah, radishes are just really great to grow in Central Texas because we get that perfect mix of cold, but not too cold. Cold where it's cold enough that the radishes will thrive, but not 
be buried in snow or something else. And so, once again, perfect example of what happens when you plant your radishes too close together. I've got all these radish greens, which are still great and make great um, additions to salads. That is the tops of the radishes, but the actual root itself um, didn't turn out as great as our carrots, but still pretty exciting. And um, definitely a success in the regard that this is not our first harvest, but we've already done a couple. So let's get these cleared out of here and we will move on. Look at that, pretty cool. So we're gonna leave these, these main radishes here, as I mentioned, so that we can get our seeds uh, in the months to come. Let's move on. And this is my favorite part of these garden tour videos where we've got everything planted post harvest and we're gonna walk around and take a look at all these very interesting things and talk about them. And not everything's been in this garden bed for the same amount of time. Obviously, I just put a ton of stuff in it. But for example, like these strawberries here have been in the garden for years, uh, literally two years now. And so we're going to go around and talk about all the neat things in this garden. I'm growing all sorts of, you know, herbs, vegetables, fruit, uh, root vegetables, lettuce, as you can see here. So I'm going to start over in the more interesting corner. And we're going to start about the we're gonna start with the most recent addition to my garden bed, which is this blueberry plant. I found this blueberry plant over at Green and Growing about two weeks ago, and it is really interesting. Obviously, it's very inviting. These blueberries make you wanna just pull them right off the vine, but I have tried to do that a couple of times, and people have left comments and videos from years ago letting me know that if I don't wanna die of parasites, I shouldn't be pulling fruit directly off the vine and eating it, which, of course, uh, I failed to do, and, but I try to prevent the children that, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my friend's kids from coming over here and eating the plants, uh, excuse me, the fruit directly off the plant. And also, these, uh, this blueberry plant, plant isn't quite ripe yet. Um, the fruit is still a little bitter, still a little sour, and I personally like it that way, but there's about a, maybe a hundred blueberries on here, and I'm excited to see if this plant continues to produce in the seasons to come after enduring some of the winter weather. As I just mentioned, though, one of the plants that can definitely stand up to winter weather are these strawberries here. I planted them when I bought my house, when I finished the garden bed in November of 2021, which is about a year and a half ago now, and they've yielded so many different successful harvests. Um, the strawberries have tolerated uh, freezing rain, you know, rabbits. Looks like somebody took a bite out of that, that strawberry right there. Um, and me failing to harvest all of these strawberries. So some of them are just kind of rotting here, like uh, maybe they're kind of buried here. But um, you'll see some black strawberries on the vines. Obviously, I need to come through and get these green strawberries unburied. It's kind of what an immature strawberry looks like. And they grow from these little white flowers. I don't actually see any flowers out today, but this one is so small, you can kind of tell it was very recently a flower. And when they get pollinated, they get a little bit larger and eventually throw into the strawberries that we recognize. And so I think these are some of the most iconic. Everybody has the same reaction to seeing strawberries, which is, oh, wow, like, I can't believe you did this. This is so cool, you know, and they're not hard to grow. I'd actually say they're some of the easiest. Now, that's given my good soil quality. They are easy to grow. Um, but I'd recommend them for your backyard, your, <laughs> excuse me, I'd recommend them for your backyard gardening space if you're working on a garden here in Central Texas. I also have some blackberries. Uh, figure we'll do all our berries first. And so there's no blackberries on my plant yet. This is a uh, thornless blackberry plant that I've planted about a year ago. It weathered our winter and it looks like we even have our first bulb right there. So this plant has never yielded fruit, but I can just tell from looking at it, there's our first bulb. So you have to stay tuned. Maybe if you're watching this and it's been some months or some years since I uploaded. Check out the May and the June garden tours. I bet there's a blackberry harvest coming. And so I also planted these three jalapeno plants in uh, the backyard uh, during that time lapse here in the back of my raised bed is what I was trying to say there. And so this is very questionable. You're probably thinking as I'm walking around and talking about these berries and all this stuff that this is a really overcrowded space. And I agree with you. I think it is definitely maximally crowded. Um, 
I wouldn't quite say overcrowded, but for being honest, it's a little overcrowded. I crammed these three jalapeno plants in the back here because I couldn't help myself when I found these on sale at Home Depot. Um, I had to buy three of them uh, because it's so rare to find a mature jalapeno plant with so many uh, flowers on it already. And uh, this is just the way that I do my setups for a big summer yield. We've had success in the, fa in the past. Fan favorites have been the jalapeno and tomato harvests. And the way I get big jalapeno harvests, I do not grow from seed. Um, I grow these starter plants, which obviously when I get them in the ground here in the spring and they're this mature to begin with, I usually get a pretty good yield. So jalapeno plants are interesting. If you're thinking about growing them yourself, I've noticed they do better in climates with really hot summers. I've never succeeded in getting a jalapeno to overwinter in my garage. They need that summer, that summer sun and heat. Uh, they just don't like fake light. And so I just plant starters every year and it's worked for me so far. And I'm hoping it works out well this season too. I obviously also stuck some ornamentals in here. I've got an assortment of ornamentals. One of my favorite ornamentals here are these petunias. I've got purple, pink, white, and I think maybe some yellow petunias out front. Um, petunias with just different patterns on them, for the record. That's what I'm referring to. These there are marigolds. These are tulips. And uh, some people do these from bulbs. I would like to do that in the future, but I just bought these as starters because I saw them at the hardware store and they looked really cool. And I just like to accent my bed with something colorful and gets people excited when they see all these fruits and vegetables to see them paired up with ornamentals like this. And so got the petunias, like I said, over there, that little white bit sticking out is some petunia. And then I've got a whole bunch in my front blue bonnet bed, which I recently did a video on. But we're going to talk about blue bonnets at the end when I walk out to my front yard garden bed. I'll just comment for now that I, I will definitely say I'm aware that this garden bed is very crowded. Um, and I like it like that. It's, uh, uh, it's very neat. And so you can tell I left in those little, uh, uh, radishes there that have gone to seed because I want to collect the seeds for the season to come, as I mentioned when we were doing the radish harvest. And so moving on, this is all iceberg lettuce. Is that right? That's not right. This is romaine lettuce, <laughs> romaine lettuce grown from a seed. This came from the seed vault kit, the same one that Grow all the carrots. If you're curious about that seed vault kit, you can leave a comment and I will link it to you so you can buy one of your own. I think it might have been like $30 for a whole bunch of different seed packets. And this lettuce is super cool. So we've been harvesting this all season. I totally lost track of the number of harvests we've done because of how easy romaine lettuce is to harvest. You just peel it off like so. Boom. You've got lettuce. And I'm not going to take a bite out of it right now because I like to take my stuff inside and wash it as I mentioned. But when you do this, the plant can regrow uh, its lettuce pretty easily. So I'm gonna actually pick that up when I'm done doing my garden tour. But uh, whenever we're making hamburgers, sandwiches, or anything else, we'll come out to the garden and get fresh lettuce. And at this point, I have not bought lettuce from the store all year. So one of the few things I could comment on that's been super easy to do is growing lettuce in this raised bed setting. And I've said this in many of my other videos, but just to explain why I'm using this raised bed, all of these things in here, there are so many things in here that I grow for the purpose of eating. And my neighbors, I made a video uh, three days ago about drainage issues that I've faced in my backyard garden. And essentially my neighbors will put down Roundup and, excuse me, Roundup and other um, pesticides and different kinds of toxins, uh, dog poop and everything else that's in people's yards. And it will wash through my backyard garden. Um, through my backyard, rather. And so I built this raised bed to just elevate some of the things that I'm growing off of the ground so they can avoid fallout from Roundup and other poison that people are putting on their lawns. And so this has been a super successful uh, space. I think I've already mentioned it at this point, but I filled this bed with a whole bunch of bags of dirt that I got from the hardware store and um, perlite, and I used 131313 13 fertilizer. Um, maybe about once every three months, I'll lightly fertilize, uh, according to the instructions on the bag. And so far it's yielded me many fruits in their seasons. And so, uh, one of the other things that I'm growing here is this fig tree, which is kind of interesting. So I have this little fig tree here in the middle. It's an LSU gold fig tree. And I actually had to prune it back down to the base because it kind of died off during our last round of freezing rain, but it is regrowing. And I've got these other couple of fig trees here. I forget the different species or types of all these figs here, but I believe this one is a Kadota fig. 
and these others in containers here are both Celeste figs. And so these used to be in ground in my backyard, but I dug them up to plant bigger fig trees and everything died during this last freezing rain except these, these figs which were in my garage and that one in the raised bed there as uh, the raised bed is a little more gentle. You'll have to excuse that that noise up there. We've got a uh, place where people learn how to fly near my house, like a flight training course. And so I'm assuming the audio is super loud with that propeller plane flying overhead. But I actually think it's kind of cool. Uh, my daughter and some of the kids in my neighborhood are really interested by the planes that fly overhead. And um, and that's neat. And that's, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I think adds to the novelty of the neighborhood that I live in. So Moving on, uh, that's enough about the raised bed and general practice for why I built it. Um, in that time lapse, I also planted these two different tomato plants. And same as the jalapenos, tomatoes are always a fan favorite. They've yielded, I think, nearly 40 pounds last season between just two plants I had. Um, this year, I'm doing cherry tomatoes on the left and mammoth tomatoes over on the right. So on the right, they're kind of like beefsteak tomatoes. They're some sort of hybrid. I forget the exact hybrid that I'm working with, but um, these plants are really exciting. They've already got tomatoes on the vine and the temperature is perfect. These tomatoes germinate when the daytime temperature is under 90 and the nighttime temperature um, is above 60. I don't know about 60 is a firm number, but that's about where we are right now. And so they are doing super well and I'm excited to see what they yield. I'm saying they're doing super well. I'm just kind of on um, on autopilot right now. I just planted these. I anticipate they're going to do super well in the months to come. Once again, I'm going to revisit this cabbage because I don't know if I already said this and forgive me if I'm being a broken record here, but I harvested this cabbage head just a moment ago and I've learned online that when you do that, sometimes even up to three cabbage heads will grow from the cavity if you leave these leaves on the ground. I know I've already said it at this point, but I'm saying it again. And uh, I'm really excited to see if that actually works. Obviously, we'll see if the summer sun doesn't beat this thing into a pulp. Replacing my eggplant, which I grew from a seed years ago. I've got this little eggplant here, just a starter. Um, my eggplant last year yielded about two or three fruits, and hopefully this one grows to maturity and quickly yields its fruit as well. Almost finished here, we've got our cucumbers. And so I moved my trellis out here Last year, these cucumbers did super well. I grew a whole bunch of cucumbers, which I pickled and cooked with and did all sorts of other things. And so we've got our four starters here at the base of the trellis. You've probably already seen that other trellis that I've got over here. And once again, if you live in central Texas, I recommend attempting to grow cucumbers. They grow easily. I've grown them from seed. I have also grown them from starters and I found it to do, uh, I found it pretty easy to do both times. So cucumbers are pretty cool. But once again, just planted these, so we'll see how they turn out. And then finally, we've got our herb corner. In our herb corner, we've got parsley, onions, and cilantro, which very interesting, uh, interestingly have all gone to seed. So if you don't know, cilantro, when it goes to seed, becomes coriander. Down here at the base, we've got all of our cilantro, and up top, we've got all these beautiful little white flowers. And if you look closely here, um, I'm trying to find some. Here we go. If you look closely here, you'll see we've got these little spheres, these little balls here. These are going to dry out and become our coriander, which we can plant next year for more cilantro or just grind up. Obviously, coriander is super popular. Spice, I don't know what to call it, an herb for cooking. People grind it up and uh, it's, it's great for cooking with. And so it's nice to do these plants, which uh, their seeds are useful for cooking as well, but... Uh, you know, we'll have to see how the parsley turns out. I can see these seeds collecting here on the top. I know parsley seeds are used as a ingredient for some things. I personally never cooked with them, but our parsley hasn't been used very much in general. And so maybe the seeds can be put to use. And then finally, we've got some onions here. Now these onions, all of them, well, not every single one, but most of them have been regrown from food scraps. So like this big green onion here, is actually just regrown from food scraps. And I don't know how big the onion is down here. I assume not super big because um, these were like shallots. But you can kind of see if I peel this away, uh, it's getting pretty big. And I'm gonna leave it in there to get bigger this summer, turn it into a big old leek, and we'll see if uh, see if that's good for anything. But there's also a couple, the smaller ones are red onions. 
uh, which were planted just a couple of months ago, and we'll have to see how those turn out. And so everything in this raised bed, like I said, all of the fruits, vegetables, seed, and whatnot, all of the starters combined, maybe, maybe $200. And that's pushing it. That's only because the starters are expensive. The seed, I mean, we're talking like 4 or $5 for, you know, all of that romaine uh, lettuce seed. And so it's really neat. It's, it's fun to see how fruits and vegetables grow and where food comes from. I think the fruits are what are more fascinating for me, this little blueberry bush here. And I notice that other people usually comment on the fruit as well. And so I've been able to do this with just a really small section of my backyard. This raised bed is three by, is that right? I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, that's right. Three by 20 feet. So I've got 60 square feet of gardening space. It's about two feet high. Um, so obviously you can do the math. It's about 120 cubic feet. And my backyard is 4,000 square feet in total. So I've always wanted my backyard to be a space where my wife and I can entertain. Um, in fact, our daughter's first birthday is coming up next month. And we rented a bounce house and we've got this really fun uh, day plan to celebrate her first birthday. But I've also planted uh, some of these blue bonnets here. And I, I don't know how that's relevant to my daughter's birthday. I'm just saying I like to make, uh, I like to dress up my backyard to be a space that's good for entertaining. And I think these blue bonnets make the yard look really cool. Um, taking photos in the blue bonnets is a really common tradition down here in Texas. My wife and I have done that with our daughter this year. And I like to spice up my backyard by adding in a couple of blue bonnets. As I mentioned previously, we also did a video where I grew a whole bunch of blue bonnets on my front lawn. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to go out front and take a look at those blue bonnets because they've now gone to seed. But before we do that, I have this little side yard here that I almost never talk about in my videos. And in it, I'm growing some crepe myrtles. And so crepe myrtles aren't the best thing to grow in Texas. They're really popular. I've seen a couple of people recommend growing um, Texas persimmon which is very similar to crepe myrtles. It's native and it does a lot better in our soil, but I think my crepe myrtles are doing all right. They accent my side yard in such a way where, um, you know, it just looks nice. Uh, an otherwise awkward, empty space looks a little bit nicer. And then finally, out here on the curb, I've got my Granny Smith apple tree just coming out of its dormancy. You can see a couple of leaves poking out there, but like I said, these crepe myrtles, and I'm trying to block the wind there. That's why my hand is in the shot. <laughs> These grape myrtles make this corner lot look a lot better, I think. And finally, like I said, these blue bonnets. I have all these blue bonnets out front, and I can feel the wind finally picking up after hours of no wind. And all of my beautiful blue bonnets, which were looking so vibrant just a few weeks ago, have all almost gone to seed. So now we see all the weeds, all the crabgrass, and everything else poking up over the blue bonnets and down in here. All of our blue bonnet pods are ready to go. These pods are gonna dry out and crack open. They'll release our seeds into the ground. I'll mow over our little blue bonnet meadow here. And then hopefully at that future time, my front yard bed, which I've got a nice little sunflower grown there. Also a uh, son of the sunflower from a couple of years back that was in our intro video. Um, and we've got zinnias from years past. They grew all sorts of zinnias in this bed. I've also got these sweet potato vines. I'm kind of hoping they fill the bed and just look really cool in this space. So that's all I have for today. That was a big video. That took a long time to film and prepare. And I feel bad because Charity's been upstairs with Eden changing diapers and doing all this stuff while I'm outside frolicking in my meadow and making my YouTube video. And so I really appreciate you guys watching this video today. It's been super fun to make and I've got to wrap it up so I can go help my wife out. But I just want to wish a very blessed Easter to you and yours. And thank you again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.